and Alan Nascimento, both 30 years of age. Nascimento taller by an inch and a half. Both fighters coming in at or below the 126-pound divisional limit. Half-inch reach advantage resides with the 4-1 to favorite, Ulan Becca. Now we say hello for the first time tonight to Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live from Eddie Hot Arena here in Abu Dhabi. Fight fans, a very good evening and welcome to UFC 267, Bojovic versus Teixeira. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go three rounds this in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a striker standing five feet, eight and a half inches tall. Weighing in at the flyweight limit, 126 pounds in 22 fights. His record, 17 victories with five defeats. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hey. Here is Puro Oso, Ale Nascimento. And across the octagon, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. His background, wrestling and grappling. At five feet, seven inches tall, he weighed it officially 125 pounds. His professional record stands at 13 victories with one defeat. Finally got a Makhachkala, Russia. Here is Tagir Ulubekov. And your referee in charge of the action is Dan Movahedi. And we welcome back Jenny Andrade for the first time in a long time. Carly Baker, Red De La Cruz also with us here on Fight Island. You ready? You ready? Alan Nascimento plus 310. If you like that number, the underdog tonight, he is in the white trunks. Tagir Ulan Bekov prohibitively favored. He's in black, and there's an early leg kick for Nascimento. And I expect, I expect that from Nascimento early because... In Ulan Bekov's debut, he looked great, but he had a back-and-forth battle with Bruno Silva, and he was able to land a lot of leg kicks and hurt him to that calf, even though ultimately he was able to get the decision. He still has to be careful. When you're the, both these guys so tall, yeah, safe and flyweight, do you see? is a big dude because not only is he tall, he's real filled in through the middle. Look at his chest, his body. He's big and strong. And you see him land two outside leg kicks beautifully. Tiger's going to have to check those. Yeah, you see these guys in the hotel lobby, they look like featherweights. I, I, I agree. I thought the same thing, especially when I saw Tagir. Nascimento was on the Contender Series back in 2018, fought Howley and Paiva. He's had four fights fall through since that time, also had a surgery. And there's a nice low leg kick by him. Oh, beautiful counter there. You saw that? Yeah. You saw that little pull right hand. He landed there on Tiger. Nice slip, too. Good head move. There's the jab from Tagir. Oh! Now here, let's see what Tagir... Beautiful. I mean... Beautiful what step these around. guys do, DC. Yeah, beautiful step around on the body lock. Was able to step left. Take Nascimento in that direction. Now he's in the half guard. Not rushing. Right in front of Habib Nurmagomedov and Javier Mendez. He's got to be very Watch careful. Watch triangle here. Up. Yep. Nice. Using his elbows. Ah, there you go. Tagir is able to get his arms back inside. That's one thing they always tell us in grappling, Paulie. Both yeah. in or in both or out. out. Yep, you cannot have one in, one out. Nice. Look at Nascimento starting to clear his hips here, trying to throw up an armbar. Ulanbekov has to be very careful here. See, look at that. He's got to be very careful. Nascimento is doing a great job of being active. Wow, beautiful look at that. Wow. Didn't get down, but look at Tagir right back up, already in on a takedown of his own. And that's the beauty of the small guys, right? You see yeah. stuff like this, the grappling. You got to be so good if you're going to fight at 125, 135. Everybody in those weight classes, they're phenomenal because they're so well-rounded. As Paul mentioned, Nascimento trains alongside the UFC lightweight champ Charles Oliveira, cross-trains his Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the B9 Academy under Marco Barbacinha. Just over two minutes here to go in what has been a competitive first round. John, he's training at jiu-jitsu because that was a beautiful sweep. He did a good job showing Ulan Bekov armbar and sweeping it back in the opposite direction. Look at that. Wow. As he rolls to the he's leg. On the leg. Yep. I can't see where that knee is. It looks like oh, it might it's, be. It's getting tight. Ulan Bekov did a great job of attacking the hand. Yep. 
You can't finish leg lock and all that with, without your hands. Got to watch his neck here. Here, here. By Ulan Bekov. He's trying to get it's his legs locked. It's, it's high. high. It's very tight. Oh, that's tight. Oh, Mata Guillotine. Mata Guillotine here oh, by Ulan Bekov. That's really tight. Oh, he's done. We saw Volkanovski in the same position against Ortega. You got to freak out. You got to get a little nuts. You got to push go on crazy. the hip. Yep, you got to go crazy. Oh! oh Nascimento is out with 90 seconds to go in the round. Wow. Dude, back in the day, that was the end of fights, right? Oh, yeah. Luke Rocco, remember Luke Rocco, Molly Guillotine, Michael Bisbee. And it was like you were done when you got to those positions. Now we're seeing guys escape. They're so calm and patient in there that it's not ending in the way that it used to. Oh, nice left hand there. Edna Cimento has some fantastic defensive grappling. Both these guys, right? I mean, back and forth. One guy will secure a position. And then you've got Nascimento who's going for submissions and then using those failed attempts as sweeps, which is really shows the high caliber grappling that he's yeah. capable of doing inside there. And Tagir following right along. I mean, both these guys just going back and forth. That guillotine was tight. I mean, and he had his hands all the way up. <laughs> just pushing that elbow deep inside that choke. That's when you know you kind of got a guy. When you get that elbow high, you can start pushing the arm back towards the neck. You can feel the pressure. But, I mean, Nascimento was able to defend that. Now, finds himself here. He's attacking the Kimura trap. He's going to use that to try to sweep again. Look at that. Yeah, that's Look at him getting the do. hips up. He's, he knows he's probably not going to be able to secure this submission, but it's going to be able to at least get him out of that bottom position and, and create some space. Well, you know what's happening now, Paul, is because he's gotten them going so much, now he's stopping Tagir whenever he throws something up. Tagir stopping and waiting, opposed to trying to advance his position. Respira. Breathe. Come on, respirada. Breathe some more. He couldn't find you. You saw all of his movements. And he's doing those takedowns that we imagine he would. Try not to get too close to him, not to grapple. It's perfect. You do it excellent on your feet, in and out. On the ground, when you're on top, stabilize. Don't rush it. Try to stabilize and stay on top. And then you can start working. Your movement is great. Well, UFC 268 comes correct with an absolutely loaded fight card next weekend. Get things started with the early prelims on UFC Fight Pass. And also watch the best of Kamal Usman, Colby Covington, Rose Namajunas, and Zhang Wei Lee, courtesy of the largest combat sports library in the world. Download the UFC app and start streaming UFC Fight Pass today. You may want to check out Dean Thomas's fights while you're on UFC Fight Pass. Dino, Ooh. good afternoon. Hey, what's happening, fellas? And that was about as competitive and as technical as you'll ever see in a first round. But what I like what Nascimento did so well was he used what I'll call a principle of the four S's from the back, from his bottom. He strike, submit, sweep, or stand up. And it was so beautiful to watch him do those things, and a lot of fighters that fight off the back can learn from that. Thank you, Dean Thomas, with us all night here in Abu Dhabi. Well said, Dean. The corner of Nascimento said, don't grapple with him, but I thought I he did a good job off of his back. But the reality is, when you're on your back, most times they're judging against you. And even though he had a couple beautiful sweeps, you could see that his corner knew that that is not where they want to be with Ulan Bekov as Tagir changes levels to a double leg, and he starts to just take the back of Nascimento. Yeah, and that was a little slow reaction time there as well from Nascimento. I mean, Tagir did not exactly hide that takedown attempt, and he no. still got in deep on that double. Now he's at least back up, got this wizard. Well, you wonder how much of an effect it takes on these guys after a first round like that. It's fun for the fans to watch, but it's extremely exhausting yeah. to be changing positions and grappling and effective grappling like we saw in round one from both of these guys. Nascimento fought Ricardo Hamos all the way back in 2013. That was the year that Ulan Bekov turned pro. Nice knee on the inside, or so it appeared from Nascimento. You saw you saw Tagir try to go back to that bear hug takedown. Nascimento did a good job of getting the lock up high. Yeah. So opposed to letting it stay around his hips like he did the first time, he able to pull it up high. But then 
he allows Tiger to go down, and by attempting the submission, he ends up exactly where Ulambekov wanted him to be. Yeah, and the problem is you can keep it, you know, throwing these submission attempts up there, but if you, like you talked about, if you keep ending up on the bottom, it's just not a good look for the judges. Especially, it depends on how close, right? People will to argue that and be like, well, at least you're throwing up submission attempts. Right. But they've got to be real close yes, for to sure. really count that, right? To count a submission attempt, which he's got exactly. Just one on each side. Just one. Which it seems like there was many more, right? But they weren't exactly close. Like just grabbing a Kimura grip doesn't mean you're attacking a Kimura. Well, he's starting to get an angle. This is different. Yeah, now he's starting to get a little bit more of an edge here. Fight, fight, now, fight, fight, fight. now we can say this is oh, an in my opinion, right? He's real angling real. off. He's used, oh, he wants to do a triangle as well fight, 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 on top of it. Ulan Bekov needs to get his hand back inside. He needs to try to work his left, right arm back towards his body. That's how you defend Kimura. You keep it close. You keep it in tight. You want to take the inside of your own thigh in order to make sure it doesn't get away from your body. But again, Paul, that was a great submission attempt there by Nascimento. So it's on Tagir now to get some ground and pound going in order to win this round or really separate himself from Nascimento. Under two minutes here to go in the round. Nascimento's last fight was in late July of this year. Took it on short notice and the UFC contract offer came in two days later. He breaks it in tonight here against Ulan Bekov. Back ahead, UFC veteran Sertanejo, Felipe Aranches in the corner of Alan Nascimento as well, to our immediate right. He's got this fence right behind him here. He, he can't just sit here and throw these little elbows. He's got to push off, try to get some separation from Tagir here, and use that fence to get back up. These are good elbows, but when you do that and you land a few of them, then you got to kick off on the hip, frame off on the face, try to scoot your butt, and get the hell out of there. You're just sitting on bottom with one minute left. You're giving this round to, to Gear, yeah. who's doing a good job controlling him. I'd still like to see just a little bit more activity from the top of both these guys hustled pretty hard in that first round. Here's another another submission attempt, trying triangle here, but that's the thing with Nascimento. Nascimento's not thinking get back up. He's thinking playing jiu-jitsu, right? Everything's a submission off of his back, opposed to rushing back to the side of the octagon and trying to stand. Oh, nice elbow from the bottom, and Bekov now returns fire. That was a great elbow from the bottom there. Ulan Bekov is on top, controlling, landing these little choppy shots, but he needs to land something that's a little more damaging to really make Nascimento think twice about throwing up all these submissions. Easiest way to stop submission is to blast somebody in the face. He hasn't been able to do that yet. He's still got a good lock on these legs. There's another Kimura attempt here from... Oh, to the armbar. Man. Oh. Ooh, late elbow. You have to take him down. You have to push forward. Work with your punches. Work with your kicks. Try to pass the guard. Only five minutes. You have to win this round. All right, round three is brought to you by P3, the official protein snack of UFC. Daniel Khabib Nurmagomedov with an urgent tone there in the corner of Ulan Beka. Yeah, and you know, honestly, Nascimento has had a lot of success off of his back, and Habib is telling them to take him down. He wants him down, but he wants him to use his kicks and punches to get there and land more from the top when he does get him down. Now you see him. Listen, but look at Nascimento. Use that Kimura trap to sweep. Yeah, but Ulan Beka is so good with just rolling with that and still staying in top position. He's got to watch his arm here. Yeah. But we've been here already about three times at least in this exact scenario. Well, he's going to throw up that reverse triangle because his hips aren't clear. Look at that. In order to try to get the armbar. So now he's got the reverse triangle but doesn't seem tight yet. 
Olin Bekov does a good job of trying to race to the next position. That's why he's keeping top control. And it's because of this, DC, that Habib was very urgent about him passing the guard. Don't just sit in the guard because that's when Nascimento is going to be able to do his best work. Tagir's been full guard a lot of this fight, and that's why you see so many submissions. Here's a chance to pass right here. The yes. guard's open. He's on his side. He Pressure down, hip down onto those legs and go around. Yeah, step to KC control here. You push down the leg, step over with your left leg so that you're sitting on top of his leg yeah. opposed to passing the traditional half guard. KC, three-quarter control. And then you See? force Nascimento to make decisions, give up his back that will allow for you to advance to the next place. But Nascimento also is just, since he's got such strong jiu-jitsu skills, he's so comfortable off of his back, throwing up these yeah. submission attempts, but Ulanbekov all over it. Four out of five on the takedowns thus far, as you saw for Ulanbekov. Three minutes and change here to go round three. Yeah, and it makes you wonder if he's accepting some of these takedowns because yeah. he feels so comfortable fighting off of his back. I was going to say that to John. Like, I mean, how do you look at this with all the top control from Ulan Bekov, but when you look at the person that's more active, it is not Cemento. He's throwing up the submissions. He's landing and over and over again as well. It is extremely urgent for Tiger to try to pass the guard. He's got to get out of the full guard. Not Cemento's too good here. Yeah, because he's too confident. Look at his face. He doesn't even look. He doesn't even look. He doesn't even look like he's in danger right now. Tiger needs to pass the guard. Tagir's having trouble getting his own offense going because he's constantly defending submissions yes. from this position. Yes. But there it is. Now he's passing, right? Now he's in half guard. So now he can go to work and sit be a little more effective. He's got to sit on that hip, drop some pressure. But it shows you, right? And a guy like Nascimento, who has not been in the UFC, how ready he is to be here. Yeah. Because even if he goes on to lose this fight, which I would score the fight for Ulan Bekov. Even if he loses the fight, you see fighting a ranked guy in his UFC debut and having a great account of himself. Before Tiger to be in there with a guy that's as tough as Ulan, um, sorry, as tough as Nascimento, to be able to control him and win the fight the way that he did, execute the game plan, would be a positive for him also. Nice left hand yeah. from Ulan Bekov. That, and that's what Ulan Bekov has got. He's got to be more active with that. Now that you're sitting on that hip, you're in half guard, you can start to afford to be a little bit more aggressive. It kills so many submissions, right? So many submissions come from the full guard. Half guard, you're essentially limited to trying to take Kimuras and other things like that, trying to roll. Uh, roll, roll to different positions. This is very difficult when you have a wrestler with a good base flattening you down from the half guard. When you're in the full guard, now you can start throwing up your legs and doing everything else. Another good left hand there from Elon Bekov. The one problem that I see with Nascimento is the urgency to get from right. being flat. Yeah. He does stay flat on his back a little bit too much, and that's allowing Tiger to control him. Watch Tiger here. He'll reach up with his right hand around the neck to try to flatten Nascimento out, and Nascimento won't make it. He's going to go for another Kimura. Yep, one Kimura again. You see Tiger grabbing his wrist on the bottom here, though. Trying to stay low. Nascimento's had opportunities to get up. He's content to yeah. play this game. Yeah, he wants to submit him. You can tell him he is fighting off of his back constantly here, throwing up triangles, Kimura's armbar attempts, using them to sweep early in the fight. But we've noticed as this fight starts to click on, Tagir is able to hold him there and not yeah. allow him to get swept. It's kind of crazy to see him fight oh. with this, this game plan because you, you heard oh. his corner really not wanting him to do this. Yeah. All right, competitive fight, wall to wall between Alan Nascimento and Tagir Ulan Bekov. Three to one in terms of the significant strikes landed for Alan Nascimento unofficially. Of course, the four takedowns loom large for Ulan Bekov, who had north of ten and a half minutes of control time on the ground at DC. Right here, you see Nascimento land that beautiful outside leg kick, jab from Ulan Bekov. Look at him step around here with that. Double underhook, nice takedown, good knee inside. 
One of many submission attempts by Nascimento. Beautiful elbow from the bottom while trying the armbar once again. Then you saw as the fight went on, Ulambekov was able to land more ground and pound, short elbows. And honestly, it's going to come down to all that top control that Tagir ended up happen having in the fight. All right, later tonight, you may have heard, we've got an ESPN Plus special presentation of UFC 267. Jan Bohovic defending his light heavyweight title against Glover Teixeira. And that's not all, an interim bantamweight championship matchup. Piotr Jan versus Corey Sandhagen, UFC 267 tonight. It's coming up next right here on ESPN Plus. And man, we cannot wait. All right, it looks as though the scorecards are in. They are. Joe Martinez has them. Well, fight fans, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Judge Cartledge scores it 29-28 for Nascimento. Paolillo has it 29-28, Ulambeca. And Judge Ransom scores it 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Tagir Ulambeca! Your boy Khabib Daniel yeah, he was with nervous. a sigh of relief, yes. but Tagir Ulan Bekov will maintain his number 15 ranking. Man. He has won five consecutive fights. Right here, you see one of Habib's uncles mm -hmm. right there in the back. Two of his uncles as Tagir goes and celebrates with them. They're in the arena early, very close. <laughs> they put a lot of emphasis on those submission attempts from Nascimento. Great job, brother. Congratulations. And yes, Hasbullah is octagon side <laughs> tonight, and we congratulate Tagir Ulan Bekov on a big win tonight in Abu Dhabi.